I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Donegal, um, well, part of the management team, certainly, selector, I suppose, Leo McLoon, here to launch the 2021 Airgrid, G- Airgrid GA Football Under-20 Championship. Airgrid, the state-owned company, is charged with delivering a cleaner energy future for Ireland. Leo, how have you been doing? I haven't spoken to you for a couple of years, but uh, rather than being an inter-county footballer, these days you're involved in a management team. What's it been like with Gary Duff? Yeah, um, I suppose it's been a big change for me, um, getting into the, to the coaching side of things. So, um, no, I've been really enjoying it at the minute and um, kind of different. It's very different. I suppose your um, the big thing I've noticed is when you're driving to training, you have having those, uh, that, that nervousness of getting dogged or that anxiousness. So you can drive down the road and, and, and sip your tea or coffee and, and, and be a bit more relaxed. So um, it's not too bad. And has it been an adjustment for you not no longer playing inter county? You're you know, you're obviously still playing club football and going very well there. You had that Ulster title or sorry, that Donegal title not so long ago. But has it been a big adjustment for you? Um, yeah, it has been a bit of an adjustment, all right. Um uh I suppose just kind of the, the toughest bit is kind of mixing and um uh the club with the um with the county and, and trying to get a nice balance there without, you know, without overdoing it so um no it's um been a brave adjustment but i suppose um, i'm only out of uh, the inter county set up a couple of years so i kind of went i kind of fell back into it fairly quick you know the the, the traveling and the and the and the trainings and things so it's not too bad that way do you find this you know obviously you're, you're a little bit older than you were i mean you're probably still only early 30s so still flying it but do you find that ever since stepping away from inter-county do you still train to the same level personally prepared to the same way do you do the diet the same way or do you sort of relax on some of that a little bit i it's um it's been fairly similar now all right and in, in, in some sense um you know you're still supposed to in your your two days um, collective training and your two days gym work during the week and your game at the weekend. So um, it's been fairly similar that way. Um, I think the travel is something that that hasn't that has you know you're you're at club training in five minutes as opposed to maybe forty five or fifty minutes for um, inter county. Um, we bit more relaxed, I suppose, in, in, in other ways like um, games or. or you know, you have your Saturday evening off. Sometimes if you have your game on your Saturday, you know, that's a contentious issue at the minute. So um, the Saturday evening game, you can, boys can relax and have their few pints um, on the Saturday evening or Sunday evening or whatever. Um, so, you know, we have that there as well. So there's so we definitely a wee bit more relaxed, not as much pressure really as supposed to, to perform, you know, and it's, um, for me, it's a bit more enjoyable. I suppose you're, you're what's your, um, with your childhood friends as such and um you know you've you've been away from that for a long time and if you hadn't got down and have the crack with them um for for a good few years so no it's it's good crack that way yeah i i'm sure you saw the likes of paul mannion stepping away and he talked about you know during the down period with COVID, that he was able to go and do other things and he had to weigh it up is it worth it like now that you see play, you know the likes of himself maybe jack mccaffrey stuff like that and you've taken a bit of well you're you've retired from it could you see, see yourself going back into it i don't mean now but can you understand now why players might say geez i'm not sure what i would you do that again if you could go back is what i'm saying yeah definitely i think it's probably in, in my opinion it's a, it's a good a good move from them all right because um it, it could probably uh, lengthen their career in, in the end. I had a question there a while ago about, you know, starting early um, to play inter-county senior. Would it, um, did it kind of essentially shorten my career as I got older? And I suppose if you think maybe them fellas are thinking, I'll take a year or two now when I can and then come back um, after that and, and play on, you know, into my 30s as such. So, um, definitely could be. Um, I'm not saying they're that's what they're planning, but it could work out that way for them, and it could it could make them have a longer career. You know, yeah, is is that why you stepped away from the panel a couple of times while you were doing golf footballer? The first half of 2015, and if I'm right, the 2017 season, you stepped away. Was it something to do with life balance? Yeah, definitely. It, it just it was. Um, it was getting a bit too much. You know, but too much almost uh, as such for me. It was. Um, 
I suppose the, the pressure and, and maybe it wasn't getting as um as much game time as I um I was kinda of hoping for. Not not that I deserved it or anything like that, but I just think um I wasn't enjoying it really and, and felt that I needed to maybe go away for a while and, and um try and come back a bit fresher and a bit more um you know but 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 ready to play in terms of um you know mentally really I suppose. Did you find the managers were understanding of that? I well, normally, all right. In fairness, I think they they understand when you when you've started off fairly young um, and you've played a lot of football. I think most managers are are understanding of that, and they can see your um, you know they can see the logic behind and behind play, what players are doing. It's like you mentioned there, Paul Mannion. It's a uh, so it's definitely hard to be missing such a good player, but uh, you know no one can argue with the reasoning because he's he's put in the work over the last number of years, and you know, no one deserves the break, I suppose. And I suppose it's all about your own your own personal personal life and enjoying things, you know. So um, no, that's that's kind of the way it worked out. Just and do you think uh, you know through your own career playing with Donny Gall and the few different managers you had Rory Gallagher Jim McGuinness and so on how much of that has informed how you look at getting involved in management now and how you want to deal with players yeah I think definitely um I was saying in an interview a while ago there that you know yeah I would be observant enough in terms of um you know seeing what's going on and keeping an eye on you know how things are, are operating and um I think it would definitely, my experience, and I would have been playing under gym, especially for a long time, um, from from underage, really, a club, and then moving up through the, the county ranks as well. So, um, no, it would have definitely informed me, kind of, and, and how I'd like to coach and, and maybe what to do and what not to do. So, um, no, I think be playing at that level and, and, and picking up, you know, things, um, is, uh, is is very important for me, and I think myself and Eamon would have picked up a lot of things in terms of you know coaching tips, and I think it's it's probably helping us um, with the under twenty team now in Donegal, and it's helping us kind of you know inform them and coach them, and um, it's at the moment it's enjoyable kind of relaying the the stuff that we've learned and maybe the things we picked up we might not have known it at the time, but we would have picked them up all the same. And is some of that around like how hard you push players physically or, or more so psychologically? Like how would you look at that in terms of trying to develop players? Yeah, and um, I suppose like um the tricky part is every player's different and, and every player has different you know needs as such, really. They um some player needs the, the arm around the shoulder and, and, and be told, you know, next ball or whatever, but Another fella might need the wee G up and um, a wee shake to get him going. So um, uh, would have would have picked up many different wee thing over over the years in terms of what you know how how to best get get um, to get the best out of players and and then how to do that. And um, it's been interesting, I suppose. Kind of it was a group of players I haven't really known prior to to getting involved and. Um, it's been interesting, kind of getting to know them and and seeing who's who and, and who needs what, and then kind of seeing then seeing the improvements in them has been has been very rewarding, and, and seeing the fairness to them, they're taking on what we're saying on board very well, and um, I suppose it's been been enjoyable. What was the appeal for the, yourself and maybe Eamon McGee to get involved with Gary Duff in the under twenties? Um, I suppose we, we both kind of. Would 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 have an interest in coaching, and I know Eamon's the, the coaching officer in Gidor, and I'm the coaching officer in, in, in Neve Connell. So we both would have a, a big interest in, in getting into coaching, I'd say, and, and something we just enjoy, really, and um, we, we, we get something out of it. So um, look for myself, I wasn't really long out of the playing inter county career, so. Um, I kind of just a slip. I slipped back in it fairly quick. So um, no, it's um, I'm very happy with the decision to do, to do, um, to to have got involved, and um, it's been probably more enjoyable than I would have imagined. Really, 
Um, I presume you watched Donegal beating Donny uh, down pretty well in the Ulster Championship opener the other day um, at senior level. What, what were your thoughts on the performance? Um, certainly put up a good score and plenty of players looking in good form, Paddy McBrearty especially. Yeah, definitely. Um, I suppose we have we've uh, a brave few players there that um, that can can kick us points and get us scores. Like you can see, we've scores scores from all over the pitch, and um, like we've some great great leaders there also. And I know Michael got injured, but um, you know Ryan and Paddy are flying, and um, then you've Kieran and Michael Langan. They um they're they're always good for scores. Jamie Brennan come on and got got a goal. As he was only on the pitch, so um no, it's it's um it's great it's great for the for them at the minute. And um you know I think they they'll just be taking one game at a time. But to say Rory Gallagher's there, he's waiting in the wings, and it'll definitely be a, a tough task for for Donegal. You know as Rory knows knows them very well um, from being in Donegal with club football for a long time. So um, no, it'll be it'll be an interesting one, now, and I know Donegal will not be looking past it. And how much of Donegal's potential success rests around the fitness of Michael Murphy? I mean, some people would say maybe it was a bit of a risk playing him the other day in a game where most people fancied Donegal to win, and obviously won very handsomely. But do you think a lot rests on his fitness? Um. No, I wouldn't say that. No, I don't think so. I'd, I'd say it'll have a big impact on the game, all right. But um, you know, he's he's obviously a big loss for uh, for Donegal if he can't make it. But I do think Donegal have other players. Um, I think Ray McHugh alluded to it, and um, they've a lot of other players to step up to the mark and 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 try and um, you know, try and who's replicate what what Michael Murphy does in terms of leadership on the field. Um, I think we have we have a lot of players that that can do that. So um, although although he might he might make make it on the day, um, I think we have players to to step up and fill his shoes. Really, mm. you you've played under Rory Gallagher. He's obviously over the Derry team that you mentioned that are next up. How much does he know the players in Donegal? Obviously, there's been a little bit of a change over in the last year or two, as there is in every sort of panel. But is is it much of an advantage to him? Do you reckon that he knows these Donegal players? I do. In fairness, he he knows that's one of Rory's um, key strengths. Like he knows nearly every player throughout Ireland, um, very well because he's been involved with with a lot of different teams. So Donegal, I think he's been in Donegal club football for the past, I suppose maybe um, seven years or so. I'd say with Kelly Beggs and then Kilcar as well. So um, and then obviously managing the county team. I think he knows. He knows players, the Donegal players' strength and weaknesses very well, so um, it'll definitely be be a, be a help to him to know um, tactically how to set up and and suppose uh, matchups as well and um, who to man mark and things like that. So um, definitely he um, he he'll have a good insight. Yeah, well, it's one thing knowing how Ryan McHugh plays his game, but it's another thing stopping him, isn't he? Like it. Does it really amount to that much of a difference? Would it be enough to sway the game? Because I think most people will go for Donegal to win this game. Yeah, I know. As, as you say, like it's all right knowing how to do something, but um, you know, carrying it out's another thing, definitely. Um, but uh, like in fairness, you know, Derry have had a, a a strong league campaign, and I think their confidence will be very high as well. Um, I know people fancy fancy Donegal, all right. Um, and you know maybe the past would suggest that, but um, look at I think Rory is doing something something very very good with Derry, and I think they um, their confidence is high. You know they have a wee insight, and um, look hey Derry football is looking to get back on the map. You know, and, and there'll be a lot of motivation that way for them. So. Um, listen, I know Donegal have a lot of good players and, and that there. So, um, in my opinion, like it's it's going to be a very interesting game, really. Do you think there'll be any scar tissue from losing that Ulster final to Cavan last year? Because again, it, it went down as a bit of a shock at the time. Yeah, definitely. I think Donegal will be be looking to get to get amends for that. There probably thought they could. They probably thought themselves they could have played a bit better and and, and maybe got the win on the day. 
So there will be disappointment coming from that and definitely a bit more motivation um, in terms of was trying to trying to put it right this year. Um, so um, listen, you, you see, it was just kind of a similar thing happened Kerry last year with, with Cork. And they, I think they've sent out signals to the, to the rest of the country that they mean, mean business this year from from their um, mentality and their and their and their play. So um, no, I think Donegal will be, be the same, and, and they'll be looking to make amends for for maybe the, the disappointment of last year's final. Yeah, and, and who do you see as the big favourites this year? I mean, obviously Dublin are in the conversation. Have they come back at all? You know, there's been Michael Darren McCauley isn't there, Jack McCaffrey still isn't there. We don't know the story with Stephen Cluxton, who's arguably been the most important player. Uh, Keno Sullivan has now retired. Paddy Andrews is gone. There are a lot of players gone off that panel, and some of them are getting, you know, they're gone past 30. So everyone knows that the energy in the legs isn't quite the same as it was when you're, you know, at the height of your powers. Do you see them coming back at all into the pack? Um, I suppose, in fairness to Dublin over the past number of years, I think we've seen the, the younger players they've bred into the squad, and um, they've done it very well. Kind of the, the younger players have dropped in seamlessly, really. And um, like I see, I see. I know you name some of the top players, but I think you could name another ten serious good players that have been playing. Uh, regularly for for them in the last number of years, so um, you know in that sense, I don't think Dublin are going to disprove much. You know they're not going to going to um, go back much, but I do feel Kerry by by watching them have really um, up their ante this year. I feel they've went away and and you know they've really worked hard over the over the winter, and um, they just seem to be physically in very good shape. And mentally, they seem to have something about them that they're looking to um, they're looking to really to leave a, an imprint this year in this year's championship. So I do definitely think Kerry is is going to um, go be there thereabouts near the end. They'll definitely, I think, there'll be one team that'll definitely put it up to Dublin this year. You know, and, and um, in terms of our of our own county, I feel that we have some of the best players in the country to. To bring to bring it to, to Dublin also, and um, you know, I feel if getting getting over the next day really is a big one for them and building a bit of, bit of momentum. Hey, and um, I think we definitely we will definitely be there um, thereabouts um, come the come the latter part of the of the um, season, hopefully. So, um, you know, and then you obviously have Mayo as well. They're not gonna gonna go away easy. So. Um, you're looking, you're looking around there for um, for someone hopefully to to take a scalp off the dubs. What do you think is going to require for Donegal to take that next step? You know, last year obviously there was the Ulster final loss, and maybe the Super Eight's not quite happening. The years before, people talk about that uh, Mayo game in Castle Bar coming up short. What is it that's stopping Mayo or Donegal from taking that next step? Um, so it's it's a tricky question, really, and. So it's one even I would have been on the panel myself. You would ask, we would have been asking ourselves. Um, it was, um, it's just really, I don't know, building a bit more momentum um, as such, and trying to get to get um, to get everything right. Um, so was, at the minute, it's for us. We're we're getting lots of scores. Don't they all like they're, they're they're scoring plenty. As it was now, if they could just cut down on, on defensively, um, the 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 conceding like we have plenty of good players to get the scores. So, um, listen, hey, it's it's um it's a tricky one, and um I'm sure done something Donegal have been been focusing on the last number of years, and um hopefully you know they they've got the answer to it, um and I think in terms of players and and leadership they have have the answers. So um, no, listen. Hopefully that uh, you get over the over the bar. And, and when you watched when I watched the game the other day against Down, Owen Bongaller definitely had a tough time on Barry O'Hagan, who's a class player. But you know, was there enough support around him? And then even the goal when there was um, when there was I can't remember was it uh, Liam Carroll solo through and fed Quail on Mooney to score the goal. That just cut open just a little bit too difficult. And I'm just wondering, was Owen Bongaller just left too exposed? Yeah, well, this is this is kind of I suppose the debate really on on what 
way the way football has went, and um, I suppose everybody has wanted uh, less def- defensive, more attacking minded minded game, and um, I think from the league so far we've seen we've got that, and um, like I know people are are are, are criticising maybe defenders for not being tight enough, but listen, you put like you put anybody in one v one with. 40 meters of space in front of them and once they get the ball it's it's very hard to mark you know it doesn't matter like I know how fast and, and fit Owen Ban Gallagher is and you've seen when when a player has that bit of space and you've seen it against Monaghan too um, for Donegal like teams are working on how to break down 1v1 you know and you can see that the wee fist pass over the top or or, or you know different strategies to, to combat that and um like i know player people are are talking about defenders and and they're not you know maybe being as tight as they should but for me it's it's not about defending really it's it's the way the game has went and you people want more scores higher scoring games and they're going to get that so um i don't think you can be critical on on defenders because this is what 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 the way it's went, and um, it's, it's very hard to mark. And any defender will tell you that you've a fast forward that um, there's plenty of space. He's, he's going to be hard to mark. And just some of the other teams in Ulster, just to finish up on uh, Tyrone, Monaghan, Armad. It's as seriously stacked Ulster as ever. Yeah, definitely. I would say Ulster has never been as um, close. You know, in terms of. You know, the teams seem to be really on a level, a level playing field. There's very little between nearly all teams in Ulster. You know, so um, I think it'll be it'll be a great Ulster championship, and, and normally serves up one of the best provincial provincial um, tournaments. So I think it'll definitely be very interesting this year, and it'll be um, it'll be it'll be good to see who's going to come out on top. You know. Absolutely, Leo. Look, I appreciate you joining me and best of luck against Darma with the under-20s on Friday. No bother, thanks.